What is going on guys? Welcome back to another Scarlet and Violet Wi-Fi battle. Today I've got a crazy match for you. We are really living in a lawless land of Pokemon home mons just running crazy and we're using them while they're available. So let's get into it. My opponent is going to lead off with the Clod Sire. I decide to go with the Uxie. So at least this thing looks like a Clod Sire. They have a Hisuian Zorark on their squad so you truly never know what you're looking at especially with the lead. It turns out it's actually going to shoot a Shadow Ball out of its mouth. Turns out it's not a Clod Sire at all. That is a Hisuian Zorark for sure. So, hits me with some pretty big damage, but I am actually specially defensive. So, I was fine staying in here. Wanted to get that Stealth Rock up. Definitely going to be helpful here. And I definitely cannot stay in here. So, I eat a little leftover lunch. And uh, I do want to conserve this Uxie for potential Trick Room later. Uh, it's kind of important for a couple things. But, I decide to switch into Ursaluna. I figure it's most obvious if he just goes right for the Shadow Ball. I can get a free switch, I can activate the guts, and you already know what happens when Cocaine Bear gets his Cocaine, aka <laughs> Flame Orb. So he does go for that Shadow Ball, which is super nice. I'm able to basically come in for free, activate that Flame Orb, and also activate Rampage Mode. Of course, I can't really click Facade here. This thing is Ghost Type. I don't likely see it staying in, and I also can't click Earthquake because there is uh, a levitator in the form of Hydreigon over there. So I decide to go for the crunch. It's kind of my best option. I'm going to get good damage on whatever. They do actually end up switching into this thing. I probably should have gone for the facade. But I'm able to get a little bit of chip here. Take a bite out of one of his puppet head hands. And uh, I'm actually feeling pretty comfortable about staying in here. I know that I can take an attack from this thing. Uh, and I know that it definitely dies to a facade. So I'm actually just going to stay in. Go right for that facade. This thing is definitely not living that, but it turns out he actually goes for the substitute. So if you've ever wanted to watch a sea bear absolutely maul the shit out of a beanie baby, that's pretty much it right there. So good thing I didn't switch out. He would have been able to get some good momentum with the sub being up, but the facade does exactly what it needs to do. And now I've got this thing like below half and I'm feeling pretty good. I'm feeling burnt, but this thing's best damage is going to be Draco Meteor, which I can live and just end up knocking this thing out. So I just stay in. I keep to the plan. It does, in fact, go for the Dark Pulse. I'm thinking, please do not flinch. But Cocaine Bear stays focused, and uh, the facade is going to take care of the High Dragon. So that is a very big threat out of the way. Uh, I'm feeling like I should probably try to conserve Ursaluna. I do still have Uxie in the back with that Trick Room availability. Uh, and this thing, it, it definitely got a little bit, little bit of fight left in it. So... Now they get the revenge switch in, and Bear does not want anything to do with this skinny ass lizard. Got no meat on him, so I'm actually going to end up switching, and I do have the Storm Drain Gastrodon, basically for threats like this. So, uh, I'm expecting something like a snipe shot to come in, and then I can actually get some pretty good coverage on Earth Power and Surf here. So, it does end up going for that snipe shot. Squishy says, fucking delicious. I drink that up, uh, and that does boost my special attack a solid stage. So... Now I just decided to go right for the Earth Power. Kind of no reason not to here, as they actually end up switching into the real Claude Sire. That's the boy Claude right there. And this thing doesn't give a shit about my special attack boost. Most of the time you see these, uh, they're likely going to be unaware. So I go for that Earth Power. I'm able to grab a decent chunk of damage. Um, I'm mostly, I'm feeling good about the matchup here. This thing's best case scenario, it can just basically toxic me. Uh, which is actually kind of bad, because Gastrodon does a pretty decent job at walling their team. So... I'm thinking I actually am going to go ahead and switch back into Uxie. My plan with this is I can scare it out with the potential of psychic moves, potentially get my trick room up, and then, you know, Bear is going to do his thing. So I do switch out. My dude's over there bored as hell, yawning on the battlefield, just straight up disrespect. It ends up going for the recover. And I'm like, okay, this is why I hate playing against Claude Sire. It blocks your sweeps, doesn't give a shit about stat boosts, super defensive with reliable recovery. It's just all around, it, you're going to have a bad time. This little muddy bastard over here is the bane of my existence. But I decide to go for the Trick Room here. Uh, they end up going for the Toxic, which is fine. Uxie's longevity, they don't really care about it. I kind of want to get a Trick Room and then dip. Uh, so I do set up that Trick Room, and there's a couple interesting things about that. So they have some slow mons on their side. I got some slow shit on my side. So the Trick Room's just going to twist the whole, the whole situation up, which... Yeah, it's kind of what you're looking for, but uh, I'm also feeling like Ursa Luna at like half health should still potentially be safe, even if I do get outsped. So that's the thought process. Now I'm trying to figure out what my best course of action is. I actually expected them to switch this thing out against Uxie, um, but I do want to just go right for the momentum. Maybe they switch out and I can grab some momentum. Regardless, Uxie's ass is going to die and then I can get in the bear to take advantage of the trick room. So they end up going for the stealth rock, which is fine. Uh, Memento is going to go through Balls of Steel, leaving this thing in against Uxie. I should have just gone for Future Sight or just replaced that with Psychic. But regardless, this thing is now rocking with some negative attack power and I can freely bring in the bear. So I still have an interesting dynamic 
uh, with the Ursa Luna. Essentially, I'm afraid to click Facade just because at any time Zora can come in. Uh, but th then again, if it does switch in, then it can't really outspeed under Trick Room and then just dies to a crunch. But I am going to go for the Terra Normal here. The reason is I just want to get rid of that ground type so I know that for sure I can live a water move from this thing. Uh, plus, I know Earthquake kills it. He actually ends up switching out and brings in the Hatterene. So, I really wish that I would have clicked Facade, honestly. But uh, I do go for the Earthquake. I'm going to go ahead and put the Diamond on my head. You know the drill. And then an Earthquake should be enough to take care of the Hatterene. This is an interesting Pokemon because this is generally uh, going to be a Trick Room setter itself. Because, of course, it's super slow. Even slower than the Bear. But naturally, it outspeeds me right now under the Trick Room. Uh, but Earthquake should just knock it out. So, I go for that. And it turns out, it actually lives it with like negative 4 HP and that really breaks my bare balls because now uh, this thing is actually going to be able to outspeed me and likely can knock me out uh, because of the chip that I've taken here. So I don't really want to switch out here, I just, just decide to stay and go for that earthquake. Uh, unfortunately, a psychic from his weird little hat hand does take care of the bear. So that's a little bit of a failure and sometimes that's, <laughs> that's how it goes. If that thing would have switched in one more time to Stealth Rock, we would have been in great shape, but it doesn't, so, you know, it's fine. So now, uh, this thing's over here eating some leftovers, looking like a real smug asshole, and I have to go into uh, basically Gastrodon once more, because I am going to be able to tank any hit this thing can throw at me, and Earth Power again does well against the Clodsire. I'm still worried about that Clodsire, because uh, now Ursa Luna's Earthquake was kind of one of my better answers to it, but... Uh, I do go for the Earth Power here. I am actually slower than this under the Trick Room, so that actually helps me out. And down goes uh, the Hatterene, which is an annoying Pokemon, so it's good to see that thing gone. The good news for them, at least, is now they get a free switch into Gastrodon, and the Trick Room actually, I think, goes away this turn. So, I am chilling at full HP, looking nice and muddy and slimy. You know who's also muddy and slimy? Is this goddamn Claude Sire. He's going to go back into Claude, and uh, <laughs> we are just a, a couple of... We look like cousins out here, just slimy. But uh, I, I really just, all I need is some good chip on this thing. So my plan is basically just earth power it a few times. It can recover all at once, but as long as I can end this matchup uh, with this thing whittled down just a bit, I should be able to have some damage to be able to take care of this thing. I'm still mad about that hat living that earthquake. That really, <laughs> really threw things for a little bit of a loop there. But I've got some, I've got some big weapons in my back pocket, namely, I'm looking at Sneasler. That thing has the potential for a late game sweep if I can get through this Claude Sire. I'm honestly feeling like there's not that much hope. This thing is way too damn bulky. I'm hoping for a critical hit, don't end up getting it, but I knock it down to red and then it recovers and I'm poisoned and I'm just continually stacking damage as this thing recovers. It recovers more than my earth power does to it and I'm like, Jesus Christ, I, I truly, I feel like if you don't have an answer for the Claude Sire, there's, <laughs> you might as well give up. But I'm not giving up. I decide to go into Cleaver. Now this is kind of a random last ditch effort, mostly just because I don't have a great amount of damage against this thing, and it just recovers again. Like, what, what am I, what am I supposed to do? Claude is over here, full health, looking as healthy as the first time we saw him, and the only thing I can think of to do is potentially agility. Maybe this thing doesn't have, uh, like, earthquake coverage. If I can get it. <laughs> If I can get an agility, I can then, you know, try to stack some damage on this thing. Plus, Cleaver doesn't really do anything for me in this matchup, like, kind of at all. Uh, it turns out he does go for the Earthquake. I can't really take another one, so I decide to just go for the Axe. Uh, that is going to just do minimal chip to this thing, of course. And he actually ends up going for Toxic, just to watch me suffer just that little bit much more. Uh, an Earthquake, I guess, probably would have taken me out there. But now nah, this is actually kind of nice, because I... This gives me another opportunity to hit it with another Stone Axe, and it actually is going to put it into range where Sneasler can take care of this thing. So, that is the plan. I am going to go for just one more Stone Axe here, and yeah, that does knock it below half, which I'm feeling good about. I'm feeling, I'm feeling great. It does finish me off with an Earthquake with his crazy little back spikes that come out. I really feel like Claude Sire should just leave those back spikes out. It looks way cooler, but... Uh, now I get a revenge switch, and I actually have this thing in a situation where I'm, I'm feeling like, holy shit, I might actually have a chance here. I can kill it, and Gastrodon can get the satisfying final blow. So that's exactly what I do. I bring back in Squishy. I know that I'm faster, and in Earth Power, it's just in range to where Earth Power should definitely kill here. Uh, so this thing does, in fact, go down, and now the game is kind of busted wide open. I'm feeling like, okay, with Cloud Sire gone, uh, the Sneasler in the back can definitely finish things off for me. So... They are down to three Pokemon. They've got the Glamora, Inteleon, and Hisuian Zorark. So, in comes the Lotus Flower. Now this thing, if it's carrying Energy Ball, will be able to grab the knockout, but I don't really have the ability to switch him to anything. I, let, I just stay in, 
does in fact throw some balls in my face and down goes the Gastrodon. But I did what I needed to do and I've opened up the late game to Sneasler. This is exactly the situation I need to be in because I know uh, that I can go for the close combat here. Again, if you're unfamiliar with this Sneasler set, essentially it takes advantage of its unburden ability where when you use up an item, your speed is doubled. And in order to activate that, we go for the close combat, which then activates our white herb item, both uh, gets rid of the defense drops and uses uh, the item to free up on burden. So it doesn't, in fact, get punched in the face, lay some toxic debris out, but it might be a little too late because now I'm definitely faster than everything on the team. And it's time to see if Sneasler can put the team on his back. I know he can do it because this thing carries you literally up mountains in, in <laughs> Legends Arceus. So uh, in comes Inteleon. Now, interesting, again, dynamic. That Hisu and Zorak being around is really really playing in my head because I can't click close combat which is my highest damage move because what if this is Zorark then it just doesn't affect it so I have to go for the dire claw uh, and we're actually going to end up seeing the Terra come out here so I'm thinking is this going to be something a dire claw is somehow super effective on and I make the greatest play of all time turns out it actually ends up being ghost so I'm feeling like okay it's got to be that Hisuian Zorark it's the best option to bring in here to try to bait me into the close combat but I go for that dire claw uh, not very effective, gets some decent damage, and it does reveal, yeah, it's it's the it's the Zorak with his crazy-ass snake hair. But, goes for the Shadow Ball, I'm thinking, hold on. Can I live this? It's Terra Ghost, it's got the boost, but, like I said, Sneasler puts the team on his back, lives it, with 10 HP, which is actually insane. And now we're down to less than a minute on the battle timer. So an Acrobatics does finish off the Zorak, which is crazy. I thought that, that lit, there was no chance I was living that, especially with the Terra Ghost boosted stab that was actually insane but now their final pokemon is going to be inteleon uh, who i am faster than and a close combat is going to finish it off and that is going to end the game so sneezler truly was like the best possible situation and you love to see it so thank you guys very much for watching if you did enjoy make sure to leave a like i do appreciate all the support you guys are amazing i love reading through all the comments that these videos get and i'm having a fun time battling so i'll be i'll be back